Road accidents affect the lives of thousands of South Africans every year, and fatalities from these accidents are running at over 10,000 people each year. The statistics are showing a decline in the number of accidents thanks to road safety awareness campaigns, better infrastructure and improved management of incidents. The Department of Transport is dedicated to reducing unnecessary deaths and injuries further. One of Sandwell's key five pillars is road safety. To find out more about Sandwell's road incident management system and the safety technology behind the freeway management system, we talked to Nomsa Mudisa, Sandwell's project manager with responsibility for road safety. Joining me today on Sanrel TV is Nomsa Mudise. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Now, Nomsa, you are the chairperson of the RIMS conference. Can you tell us about Sanrel's road incident management system? Thank you very much. Um, Sanrel took um, the responsibility to roll out a program which is called road incident management. Um, since 1991, it started as freeway management system and it was an enabled by the Act of Parliament and we then were requested to take it over as we moved into an agency. We've been down this road since 1991. We have developed this program and it has now anchored itself even in the Sadak region. We are sitting here today at Elangen in Durban um, as part of our quarterly engagements with the member states and the provinces, all nine provinces in the country. We have a delegation of over 100 people that have joined. Uh, most of them are leaders in the sectors which they belong in, are people that are decision makers. And we come in to harmonize operation on road incident management to assess uh, what is happening in terms of movements across borders and how can we best uh, make it easier for the traveling public to go through these uh, bottlenecks and to also reach their destination as safely as possible. Now, Samuel has also invested in the research of driver behavior and safety measures. Can you tell us more about that? Um, driver behavior and research is anchored on some of the key programs that government has implemented over the years. In, there is what we call self-governance of industries. We've got what we call the road transport management system, where organizations or companies that are doing transportation on our roads, they've developed charters of operation. One of the, of the pillars of those things is to look after your drivers and make sure that they reach the destination where they are going to in one position. One of the things that people take for granted is that whoever is driving a heavy vehicle, he's just but one person behind that steering wheel. The cargo he's transporting, it's got a value. The, the machine that he's operating, that vehicle, that heavy vehicle with all its trailers, it's got a certain value in it. So this person, one mistake he does, everything perishes and the cost to what has happened in that incident, it's very huge. It is important that we look at those drivers as experts in what they're doing. They've been trained to do that work. They are well invested on, and we need to invest into their safety as well. They travel long distances. There are certain trips that go beyond a month of them traveling from the origin to destinations of port of, 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 of entry. When they get to those port of entry, after they offload, they leave another month going back to the base. This is but a human being. How long can you drive until you say, your body says to you, this is enough. So the, the investment on driver and drivers and making sure that they operate those machines the way they're supposed to be operated. It's very important and we partner with companies. Sunral will always be there to assist and partner with, because we see this on real time. When the company dispatch a driver, the, the, the nearest thing they can have as an interaction with the driver, it's through a cell phone communication. We meet them on our roads. We have to make sure they're safe until they reach their destination. It is for this reason we've, we've partnered with the industry to make sure that this happens. In this meeting, you are dealing with SADC countries. 
How have you seen the impact on road safety? Countries that are across the, uh, um, the region have actually adopted road incident management as a program of action for them. You will see them developing internally in their countries the very same pillars that we have um, shared with them. They are anchoring them there. And because the roads go beyond borders, we've got what we call the SADAC routes, the SD50s, the SD40s. When you interpret those roads, if you are in South Africa, you're talking about the N4s to Mozambique, the N4 all the way to, to, to Botswana border post. You've got your N2 that cuts across all the provinces and it goes all the way to, to feed the border post into Swaziland and Mozambique. These are economic routes of interest and therefore countries need to converge and speak in one voice in terms of how does the route serve them. If anything happens on N2 in South Africa, Swaziland feels it. Mozambique feels it because the N4 links up with N2 and therefore go through the border post all the way to Maputo Harbor. There is deliveries that are taking place there. There is movements that are taking place there. The same thing you go to Namibia all the way to Olfos Bay and for feeds that hub. And therefore we need to open up the roads and make sure that countries are unified for a common purpose to make sure that economy is stable. Have you seen with the advent of technology a reduction in road fatalities? Yes, there's always been the, um, the support of technology in making sure that there's less accidents. When we teach our drivers how to use the technology, firstly, they actually go onto those rigs supported by cameras that are monitoring them. They are supported by GPS machines that guide their, their movements. If you give them the best of the best of equipment, they will get to their destination in time. Right now, when they approach the harbors, they need to have permits. So that permit, they now get it online. Imagine if we were not living in the, in the years of the computer age, how would that driver be able to, to get that authority to access a point of entry without that permit? We are actually improving technology to also assist the border post so that there is quick and swift movement through a border post. What you see happening in Messina at this point in time, we, we want to eradicate it. What you see happening in Maseru border post, we want to eradicate it. That is why we've got what we call the traffic control centers. And most of them, you'll pick them up. They are stationed within the big routes that basically feed the border post. Those traffic management centers are very important because that's where we check the temperature of the wheels, for example. Check the shifting of the load and correct the load shifting because that vehicle, if it continues with those mistakes in place, they never reach their destination. Therefore, it's very important that technology play a critical role. Our traffic control centers in South Africa, they are of a very high standard. Visit Iteza, visit Manzuli on N1 you will see that these traffic control centers are, are made to save lives. And enforcement agencies actually use them to ensure that everybody is safe on the road. Do you have a safety message for motorists during Easter of 2025? My message will always be the same um, for all the peak periods that we, we are involved in. Firstly, uh, motorists, make sure you are compliant. Check your driver's license, whether it's still within the period which it's supposed to be, supposed to be operating that vehicle on. Plan your route accordingly. Planning of the route begins with you ensuring that the vehicle you're going to be driving is good for the road. Don't take for granted when we say every two hours, find a space where you can actually rest so that you are safe, your family is safe, and the people that are driving with you and sharing that road, you are sharing with them safely. We would like to see you go reach your destination and go back home and continue with life as usual. Remember, holidays, they come and go, but life needs to stay on. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nomsa. We appreciate the work that you do. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it too.